right, this is huge. V51 for the MetaQuest 2 and the MetaQuest Pro arrived today, the PTC, so public test channel version. I got it to try early and yeah, this is pretty glorious, at least for PC VR. Hey, Tech here, so welcome to the VR Tech channel. So let's discover it together in this video, in the good and in the bad, because yes, it's a big update, so it's gonna break things. Should you update already? Well, let's get into it. All right, here we are. So to start, V51 is gonna be, unfortunately, the first update not arriving to the Oculus Quest 1. Meta ended the support for the Quest 1 from the latest update, V50. For everyone else, congrats, because this is a big one, mostly because we're changing the Android version from Android 10 to Android 12L. And yeah, as you may expect, this is good and it's bad at the same time. Good because we have some inner features like wireless ADB directly in the headset now available with the newest version of Android. Bad because some of the apps that were built with Android 10 in mind now, well, could break quite easily. Anyway though, going back a bit, we're still talking about the PTC, so public test channel. So yeah, that means that it's still a beta. So if you want to update, well, take it at your own risk. To update a quest directly, you have to go to the MetaQuest app, devices, device settings, and then in advanced settings, actually toggle the PTC, so public test channel. Also similar thing for PC VR, where you have to go on the Oculus software, go in settings, beta, and toggle there the PTC. Again, public test channel. You might really want to update the Oculus software on the PC as well this time, because, well, the biggest thing about the update is also there. Also because we are in a beta channel, this update might change in the future, so stay tuned on the channel when it's gonna release completely with the release node, then it's not there yet. But I already spotted some interesting stuff for this update and I'm here to share it with you. All right, let's start with a big one for me that actually changed completely the way I see the MetaQuest Pro right now for PC VR, because Meta actually enabled local dimming directly system-wide for every single app, game, experience, everything you're actually use on your MetaQuest Pro while using PC VR. System-wide means that everything going through the MetaQuest Pro will use now the local dimming, something that I wish would arrive also on the standalone part of it. Unfortunately, well, that's not the case yet. As you may know, the MetaQuest Pro has a great LCD display with the hundreds of dimming zones. That means that it can kind of replicate a bit uh, what a OLED does. So having portions of the screen completely turned off in dark areas, and I've tried it in different applications, I have to say that it's pretty glorious. I mean, right now when the screen turns off and the loading screen is completely black, it gives you back that question that you had with the old, like, uh, did I just break the headset? Did it just turn off by accident? And that's pretty awesome. You might know that with the LCD's displays, well, the blacks kind of become like Grace is not super immersive. That's why the PlayStation VR 2, for example, is so good uh, looking at black areas. So, well, with the local dimming, we can have kind of the same results. Is it a perfect though? Well, as always, of course, no. Uh, being an LCD display, when uh, we have bright areas close to very dark areas, we get kind of an aura around them. Now, showing in this video is 10 times what it actually looks like in the headset because we're using a camera to actually show it, but yeah, it's to give you an idea of what to expect. Also, I noticed that enabling local dimming, something that I noticed also in the only game available with local dimming that I know, the light brigades, is that the screen tends to get a bluish hue. It's like if you change the temperature in the camera settings. Now, I don't really know the reason of that, but I noticed that, so I really wanted to share it with you. The same thing happens in PC VR. And overall, I'm really happy to report that the results with the native implementation on the Quest and the system-wide implementation and PC VR, it's pretty much the same. So Meta, can we have a toggle for the local dimming also on the standalone version? If this was a trial, you passed it. It's good. I want to toggle. Anyway, going back, I can imagine that some people, maybe they're turned off by these auras in game, so they will want to actually turn it off. They can do it. Right now though, it's just in the Oculus debug tool. It is in the Oculus folder on PC. You have to go on support, diagnostic, and then there's the Oculus debug tool. And on the bottom, you're gonna find the toggle that is true or false. On default, it's on true. And I think that's a great thing, so people can actually experience it. Uh, but yeah, you can turn it off if you don't like it, of course. Hopefully when this feature is out of the PTC, we're gonna see it directly in the software and we can change it without going 
through the diagnostic. But I digress, this part of the update is absolutely fantastic and really gives me a different vibe for the Quest Pro going forward. I'm gonna start to use it more for PC VR because yeah, it's not as good as an OLED display, but it's damn close at this time. Not perfect, but yeah them close. Unfortunately, you might know it already, this is a feature just for the MetaQuest Pro because it has these hardware capabilities as display, so don't expect anything like that for the Quest 2 because it's not possible at all. Going back to the update though, and this is about the Quest 2 and the Quest Pro at the same time, what I noticed is that the touch interface of V50 is actually much more responsive, much easier to scroll around the menus, uh, something that was a bit clunky uh, in the previous version. For sure, a much enjoyable experience. Everything feels a bit snappier than before. Don't look at my loading screens because my connection actually sucks. And great thing, they actually brought back the ability to bring closer to you or further away the dashboard to actually interact with your hands. Of course, if you have the toggle uh, for the touch interface enabled. If you have the MetaQuest Pro controllers also on the Quest 2, these received an update as well. Uh, I didn't see many differences. Maybe it could be just the placebo effect. Well, uh, they get to the right tracking a bit faster than before. You might know that if you have those controllers many times, they're just in the wrong position related to your hands. So it seems like it gets a bit better, uh, but again, it could be just placebo because we received an update and uh, I wanna see some differences, you know. We are all in the same boat there. But now another nerdy good thing that happens with Android 12 in this update is the fact, as we said at the beginning, that ADB actually support with wireless ADB. So that means that you don't have to go through side quests on PC every time that you reboot the headset to actually have it to work. That means that some applications actually rely on that, like the Game Quest Optimizer actually can work out of the box without going through the PC. If you don't know about the Game Optimizer, it's a great app that I'm using a lot lately. They actually optimize, of course, as a name, over 450 apps in the store. So that means that you're gonna have a higher resolution and the difference is really, really stark. When you actually play a game with that thing installed, you have super sampling directly as much as the Quest can handle it. And uh, if you look at Dmail, for example, by default, it's kind of a blurry mess. Instead, with the optimizer, it uses Foveato rendering in a very smart way and also enhance the resolution in the center to have something that is much more similar to the PC VR version in terms of crispness. But there's a bad news as well here because Android 12 comes with um, a new way to handle uh, system storage. So some apps might actually break. And one of the apps that actually breaks is this app optimizer right now. <laughs> the dev actually sent me a version that is already working, so uh, that's a good thing. But yeah, if you don't want to see that breaking, maybe don't like install it yet because it's not ready for public release yet. And we were saying because of this different storage handling of Android 12, some things will break, mostly modded things like uh, Beat Saber. If you are using mod on Beat Sabers, those are gonna break. So yeah, it depends how much you tinker with your headset, you may find many things breaking with this new update. In the good and in the bad, because now we have a better version of Android on the headset directly, so we might have more features arriving in the future. At the same time though, things that were already working before might break, as we said, and that's never a good thing. So far though, this is update V51, for now, at least. When we're gonna have an actual release note, of course, I'm gonna make another video with all the official changes arriving on this update, but so far, that's what we noticed. That's what I saw that was very important to actually show you and share with you. For sure, if you have a Quest 2, something to get it ready for the future. Instead, if you have a Quest Pro, this is a really game changer update because if you use it with PC VR, it changes completely the way I see this headset. Personally, it's just a up a notch. But anyway, guys, let me know what you think about it in the comment below. Do you have a Quest Pro? Did you try local dimming? Did you actually like it? Let me know. And as always, if you liked the video, like. If you didn't like the video, like. Subscribe to the channel for more of VR tech. If you really love the channel, just join the button there. Little on further, also the Patreon. Thanks for the Patreon. So join the channel, of course. And I see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.